Right muckers, now in the past a lot of you have heard me talk about oil analysis. One or two people have asked me, you know, what do I mean by that? Well, it's exactly what I mean. It's the analysis of oil. And that can be found in an engine or a transmission or a gearbox driving a pump or a compressor. Now oil analysis has been used widely for years in the uh, shipping and maritime industry, uh, the oil industry, mining, heavy construction and plant. Basically what it does is it looks at the oil in, as I said, an engine or a transmission on a unit and it gives you basically a health check of the oil itself, its viscosity, its uh, lubrication and cooling properties and also the internal workings of that unit. So we use it a lot as I said in the oil industry uh, with uh, compressors, pumps, generators and drilling equipment and it's very very simple uh, to do. So what you do is when you're doing your routine maintenance you're changing the oil what you'll do is you'll send a sample away for analysis and in three to five days you get a report come back and what they'll do they'll test for um, a whole raft of uh, trace elements and stuff um, and they'll send you that back in the report. Now I've just chosen a few examples of what will come back. So let's just say we've done the oil analysis and sent it away of an engine and you'll have done this uh, a regular set amount of hours uh, when you do a change or a service uh, or you'll have done a regular uh, amount of weeks or months you know these engines are running 24 7 so what you can do is you can compare the current analysis report with the previous one and see if anything has changed so if it came back and it suddenly had an increase because they'll test it for parts per million uh, and there'll be a benchmark which is an acceptable level but if you've suddenly got an increase from last time of let's just say aluminium or aluminum as they say in the states then they'll give you an indication that something is starting to wear an increased rate and where would you find that well you'll find aluminium in uh, some pistons you'll find it in some um, shells and stuff like that so it gives you an indication as to where uh, exactly the um, increased wear is occurring and you might find something like an increase in potassium from last time well potassium is found in coolant so um, you know it's no good thinking oh that's right because I've probably got a head gasket gone on that. well hang on a minute you know are you getting an increase in um, pressure in the cooling system well no uh, is it overheating well, no but you are getting this into the oil so where are you looking you're not looking at the top you might then be looking at maybe the seat on a liner or it could have actually gone through the cylinder wall itself gone you know sort of porous or something like that or a liner starting to um, break up um, so you know it does give you a bit of a, a heads up as to where you should be looking um, maybe vanadium well, vanadium is that lovely shiny stuff they often use on spanners and wrenches you see and that would indicate uh, maybe on a conrod or a valve, that's where they use that, coating as I said. Um, so it does sort of direct you to where this is coming from. Say look, you know, there has been an increase in copper this time. It's not bad, but just keep an eye on things. You know, maybe you should be starting to look at next time you do your, um, uh, you know, routine shutdown and maintenance maybe just drop the oil pan off and have a look at the, you know, pull a few caps and have a look at the big ends and let's see what the wear is. Now the other thing is they'll operate it, uh, the report on a very simple basis, like they call a traffic light system. So when it comes back, it'll give you all the readings for all these plus loads of others, but it'll come back with a, like a green light. And a green light means, look, everything's within the parameters, carry on with your regular maintenance, everything's good. Or it might come back with an amber, like we said, well we've picked up a slightly higher uh, trace this time of let's just say I don't know, uh, tin just keep an eye on things you're alright keep it around but just keep a closer eye or it could come back as a red and a red means look you've got an issue going on the levels are really spiked from last time you've got a high reading of you know potassium or something stop it strip it down inspect it and find it where the issue is yeah that sounds bad but if you've stopped that unit running 
stripped it down, found out that actually it was, as I say, a liner that had gone. Um, I was letting a bit of water in, you know, into the, the uh, oil. That's all right, because, yeah, you've had the downtime, but you replaced a liner. Now you might as well replace the others while you're there. Great, inspect it, fine. But what it didn't do is gush its guts into the sun and cause some sort of catastrophe. So that's where it could save you. Or as I said, you know, it, it, a bearing didn't pick up and, you know, um, score the crank. Um, or it didn't, you know, as I said, seize up and stick the rod through the side of the block. It got you ahead of the game. And that's why all analysis is, is just so, so important, as I said, and it's um, been used in you know, these industry, major industries for years. But there's companies now like SGS um, that have done this for years, like over 40 years, and they operate all over the world, and they'll take analysis, as I said, for marine, for you know, mining, construction, oil industry, and places like that. But they'll also now do it for the individual. Someone with a classic car, and like what I've done, I've bought a tractor, I've looked at it, I've done all the usual checks, I've listened to it, run up the temperature, sounds good, looks good and all that, but I'd literally like to know what it's actually like inside without having to strip it all down. Um, and it is very, very simple to do, and it's very cost effective. So the best thing we can do is, um, or we'll go and take a sample. Right, well what you get with your sampling kit is all contained here. So you get your extraction tube, which you use in the dipstick hole or the actual um, extraction point. Two sample syringes. You get instructions. And then you get the actual bag that you send all off to the analysis lab. Simple. Right, you want to take your sample, if you can, from the dipstick tube. Uh, on modern engines, you'll get uh, a sampling point because they've done away with the actual physical dipstick. Right, insert this tube. Hit the bottom, then come up away from the bottom. Just draw slowly. You'll start seeing the oil come up. There you go. And what you want to do then, when you're nearly at the top, actually stop just take the tube off put the syringe back in and you can take another full sample let's draw out the sample there that. right when it's full all right remove the tube put your thumb on the end of the sample just have it upside down there you are. leave it there for the minute now what you want to do is place one of these end caps, little end cap there, put that on the end, screw that on, there you go, now that's your sample taken, so what you do now to stop that coming out of there, is snap the end off so the plunger can't be pushed back down inadvertently then. So there's your first sample. Right, second sample. So we'll do the same again. Put this on. We'll draw it up. Here it comes. So once you've got it, as we said, take this off. Let me put the little cap on the end. So on there, make sure that it's all up and done, remove, that's it. Right, I'm going to get a sample and that little cap on the end, all I'm going to do is simply 
place some tape at the end of the sample there like that just to make sure it stays in place and then let's put a bit around there we go so I won't lose any of that in transport when it's posted so keep that all right and cut that off at the lab and then what we do is we've got this here which we take off as a sticker and put onto the one of the samples and there we go these now go into the bag which you're supplied with there we go, one, two, pop that in there as well, that one goes into that, go, is all ready to be sent off. So there you go, that's how easy it is to do that, and as I said, we have now sent that off. Uh, hopefully in the next few days I'll get a report come back and I'll have a look at it I'll show you guys what it says and what you know where it's gonna go <laughs> as I said I'm hoping it's gonna be all right um, as I said if it's a, like an amber or something um, or you know even if there's a high uh, amount of one of the one of the trace elements then we can look at that and address that individually rather than just sort of like scatter gunning and, and, and you know tearing the whole thing down and just looking for anything. It, to me it's, it's invaluable because it does give me that, that sort of benchmark, that baseline to start from. And when I've changed the oil and serviced it, uh, I can run it for a set amount of time or hours and then send off an analysis of the oil that I've put in there and I've run and we'll see where it goes then. But as far as cost goes, you know, what are you expect and people think, you know, well it's going to cost hundreds or something like that. It's less than 40 quid. To have that sample arrive, you know, the kit arrive um, with all the stuff in it, the instructions, the bag, even the postage to send it back, it's all free paid postage, less than 40 quid. I think it's about like 39 pounds or something like that. Absolutely nothing when it gives you, you know, such valuable information. And as I said, if you're running a kit that costs, you know, I don't know, 50, 100, 200 grand, what's 40 quid? Um, as I said, for me, having done oil analysis, you know, most of my work and life, it's a no-brainer. Um, and uh, that money, as I said, even if you've got yourself a nice classic cut or something like that, well, you know, 40 quid, it could tell you a heck of a lot. It just gives you that little, uh, as I said, insight into what's going on inside that unit, be it the transmission or be it the engine. As I say, it's like a blood test. But, um, like all tests, I'm sort of nervously waiting now for the results to come back. So, anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, don't forget to put the thumbs up. I don't care where you put your thumb up, as long as you ask the owner's permission first. Do well.